A military era ended for Australia today as the last Mirage jet fighters left Butterworth Air Base in Malaysia. The return home of the old jets ends Australia's last substantial military presence overseas. It marks the end of an era for Australia and both Australian and Malaysian defence ministers were there for the final salute. Halt! At its peak in the 1970s, Australia had two-thirds of its total fighter strength at Butterworth, with two Mirage squadrons and 5,000 Australians, making it the largest single Aussie contingent overseas. But after 20 years of service, the Mirage jets are about to be mothballed. The federal government is putting 50 of them up for sale on the international market later this year, and the asking price, about $100 million. Australia says it can continue to provide the same protective regional air cover without basing jets in Malaysia, especially with its new Hornet fighters, which have three times the capability of the Mirages. They'll continue to do extensive exercises with Singapore and Malaysia. The Malaysians say they're happy to accept the Australian decision, and Kim Beasley denies the government is retreating. No, it's a change in its nature related to technical factors. We continue to strongly endorse firepower. We continue to be prepared to rotate uh, aircraft through here in support of uh, the integrated air defence system. And in addition, the new thing, we're going to permanently rotate uh, ships through Malaysia and Singapore. A small corps of about 250 servicemen will stay on, including Orion surveillance aircraft. But for many RAF personnel, today was a sad farewell to their fondest overseas posting. An era in Australian defence came to an end today with a ceremony in Malaysia to conclude the RAAF fighter aircraft presence at Butterworth near Penang. The departure of the 79th Squadron Mirages means Australia no longer has an overseas-based tactical fighting force. The RAAF has based fighter aircraft at Butterworth as part of the nation's forward defence strategy for 30 years, with the Mirage filling the role for the last 20. But the in-flight refuelling capabilities of their replacements, the FA-18s, means an effective force could be rushed to Malaysia in just two hours. So Butterworth's role is to a certain extent redundant. At today's ceremony, Defence Minister Kim Beasley presented his Malaysian counterpart, Tenku Rithaudin, with one of the old fighters as a symbol of Australia's ongoing role in the region. Mr Beasley says the RAAF's withdrawal is not a retreat from our defence commitment. It's a change in its nature related to technical factors. We continue to strongly endorse firepower. We continue to be prepared to rotate uh, aircraft through here in support of... Uh, integrated air defence system and in addition a new thing we're going to permanently rotate uh, ships through Malaysia and Singapore. I'm happy because there's a decision of the Australian government and we accept that. Of the 72 remaining Mirages, 50 will be put up for sale at a total cost of just $100 million. At that price, even countries with only a modest defence budget can still afford to buy a large number of what is a highly potent and sophisticated weapon. And that could dramatically alter the balance of power in a number of regions around the world. Meanwhile, Australia plans to deploy the FA-18s to Malaysia and Singapore for a minimum of 16 weeks a year. And P-3C Orion Reconnaissance Aircraft and an Army Rifle Company will continue to be based here. At RAAF Butterworth in Malaysia, Matthew Frost, SBS News. RAAF Mirage aircraft from Butterworth and Malaysia took off from Darwin early today on their last official run. The planes were flown to Woomera in South Australia where they're being mothballed until a bar can be found. The aircraft are part of Australia's rapidly diminishing Mirage fleet. They've been serving the RAF's 79 fighter squadron based at Butterworth. But the Mirages have gone and 79 Phoenix squadron is being disbanded. Uh, they've got a, a desk for me in Canberra, I'm afraid. What about the other pilots? Uh, most of them are continuing flying, but in a different way. They'll be going off to do instructor courses. And so they can look forward to, say, a couple of years uh, flying Mackies as instructors, but then they'll, I'm pretty sure they'll all come back to the Hornet. Well, the feeling is great, but uh, I hope it's not going to be my last uh, experience. <laughs> One always has hope for the future. But no, it, it's great. She's, uh, well, she's been around for a while now. It's really no longer in the technological forefront, but it's a great aeroplane still, and it goes pretty quick. 
The Mirages actually cruised at about 590 knots, or 1,100 kilometers an hour, on their last flight with RAF pilots. The Mirages are now in storage at Woomera, where it's felt the drier atmosphere will be kinder to them until they're auctioned off. It's believed the Pakistani government may be a potential buyer.